So I'll call the East Line Board of Selectmen meeting to order. Today is May 16th already, 2018. If you're able to, please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We get to start our meeting tonight with something very special, a very big honor, and um, it's always good to start meetings out with such good news. So Claire Mason is a, an award recipient from CCM, the Connecticut Council of Municipalities. And first I want to introduce Claire's um, uh, achievements, then we'll have Claire come up and, and uh, receive a couple uh, recognition uh, certificates. So Claire is a high school academic achievement award winner. She's a National Honor Society, Spanish Honor Society. She's very involved in various school clubs, including captain of indoor and outdoor track team. She's an outstanding community service person. She makes blankets and donates them to veterans, L&M, hospital, women's shelter, etc. It's amazing. And that's selfless, the selfless caring that we see here. And it's, it's, um, homespun, it's generic, it, it, it comes from the heart, and Claire, that's, that's, that's terrific. The great news is I learned tonight that Claire is going to attend my alma mater. Uh, she's going to go to Stonehill College, in, um, in, uh, where I met Mrs. Nickerson. Uh, she starts this fall, and she's going to be a major maybe in psychology, which is uh, Mrs. Nickerson's profession. One of, uh, one of uh, our town's great young people, so there's so many of them that really, I'm really, um, Really thrilled to have Claire here tonight. She's one of our town's young people who is so committed to making a great difference in our town. Um, Ron Tom Thomas, <laughs> I was going to mess that up no matter what. Ron is here from CCM, and and, and Ron, you're, you'd like to give an award out. Claire, come on up with your parents, because they deserve a little bit of credit. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, I'm Ron Thomas, Deputy Director of the Connecticut Conference of Municipalities. And it's a pleasure to present you with this uh, award of merit. Uh, CCM has been trying to get uh, youth more active in understanding how local government works, what it does uh, for the benefit of people in the community. And so we decided to have this contest for teenagers where they would tell us what is cool about uh, local government. And they could submit uh, material in any form, uh, be it an essay or a poster, artwork, that sort of thing about what's, what's cool about their community. And Claire submitted a poem, which is, I'm telling you, as I told her and her family, it's a beautifully written poem that makes you really want to visit this town and to understand that, that it's more than just a tourist attraction. It's a place where people live and enjoy living here. So. She's done a great service to the community with the poem, and I'm happy to present her with this certificate. It says, promoting good city government is important to CCM, and the local club contest provides students the opportunity to reflect on the role of local government in their own town. Our future municipal officials are in classrooms today. Education helps them to become good citizens and good leaders. So, congratulations. Thank you. Do you have the poem with you tonight? No. Uh, I do. I yeah. Don't, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. don't you want Claire to be at home at the end of this? You don't mind, do you? <laughs> so you'll need a, a, a you know, this is good for learning how to publicly, you know, public speaking. And these are just friends. These are just friends and neighbors. So it's not like you're talking to strangers. But I have also a certificate of achievement. Um, just thrilled to meet you and know of your accomplishments. It's presented to you, Claire Mason, on behalf of the town of East Line. I offer the town and the Board of Selectmen sincere appreciation for your CCM sponsored local government a contest submission entitled East Line, a poem about how our amazing local government. No one's ever said that to us. <laughs> <laughs> a poem about our amazing local government, how it helps and impacts the town of East Line. Uh, you are being honored for your support and love of your community. 
and we commend your willingness to express the good that our town provides to you and your fellow classmates, as well as to the entire community. We thank you for your kind words and your thoughtful poem, and honor you for receiving a commendation from the Connecticut Conference of Municipalities. Thank you for a job well done. Signed today, by myself. One more thing, we give this special honor to people who do outstanding things in our community. And, uh, we had Mitch at the Town of East Lyme. There's that seal again, yeah, very right? nice. Real nice. Yeah. Uh, town of East Lyme. And on the back it says, together we serve our town with pride, honor, and humility. And we give these to special people who do special things in our town, and you're most deserving. So when we yeah. give it, we give it, we do it with a handshake, like we do in the military. Right? <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. Well done. I'm going to have a copy of your poem here. Would you mind getting up to the podium and, um, and, and, and gracing us with your poem? Okay. Thank you so much, Claire. And congratulations, Karen Julius. Thank you. It's a fine, fine <laughs> the community is welcoming. There's many beautiful views. The oh, you have to speak up. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the community is welcoming. There's many beautiful views. This town is full of smiles from people like me and you. We wouldn't have these smiles. They're such a lovely place without our local government who really make it great. Because of them, East Lyme has developed into a home for many kids like me and also for tourists to come. Without the workers at the town hall, we wouldn't have events like East Lyme Day or parades or craft sales under tents. But thanks to those in charge of our amazing town, this community feels like a family for all of those around. Mm. <laughs> Thank you again, Claire. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you much. much. I could hear your heart beating from up here. <laughs> but uh, just a, a great testament uh, to uh, uh, great parents, great community, great school systems uh, that we all support one another. Thank you so much. And, uh, and congratulations and bon voyage up to Northeastern Massachusetts. 02357, if I do remember. Good luck. <laughs> So excited. And I won't uh, encourage you to stay for the entire meeting. <laughs> These get very boring and, you know, uh, uh, we think it's cool government, but I know you have school work to do and blankets to make. So <laughs> thanks, thanks again. <laughs> Thank you, Masons. Thank you. I didn't mean to kick them out either, right? <laughs> yeah, this, <laughs> right. So, so let's let, we'll move on to our meeting now. We have important business to do on behalf of the town. The additional agenda and consent items this evening, I don't believe there are any. Oh, thank you, gents. Thank, thank you, you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. I actually wanted them to stay for the, the boring part of the meeting uh, so they know how that where it gets done. So, okay, we'll go move on to delegations. Anyone like to speak on behalf uh, uh, to the Board of Selectmen this evening? Anyone? Anyone? will be time for that as well later. Uh, approval of the minutes, the regular meeting of April 4th. Move to approve the Board of Selectmen meeting of May, uh, April. April 4th. Wait a minute. Move to approve the Board of Selectmen regular meeting minutes of April 4th, 2018 is submitted. Second. Second. If you, um, uh, any comments, any corrections? If you'd all please move your microphones closer to you so it's about this far, so we all have a kind of a balanced tone. Thank you. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? Abstain. Okay. One abstention. Consent calendar, please. Move to approve the consent calendar for the meeting of May 16, 2018, in the amount of $37,020.62. Second. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Wonderful. Move on to new business. First on our uh, agenda is 2A, the discussion of the Exit 74 spill mitigation uh, letter that is uh, being proposed to be sent up to, I believe, DOT. Mrs. Hardy, you were kind of taking this under your wing as yes. part of your ex officio duties, etc. Okay, so this request comes from the Commission of Natural Resources to uh, have the support of the Board of Selectmen behind this, and that is to urge the uh, <coughs> Department of Transportation to put in to their plans for the uh, redevelopment of exit 74 and some work on 995 to be cognizant of our aquifer and to put in uh, some spill mitigation plans. 
So uh, while the project is not, uh, the design is not fully completed at this time, uh, the Commission feels that it's important to put them on notice, so to speak, that we wish to have could, uh, within the original design plan a uh, protection containment spill uh, mitigation system uh, to uh, prevent hazardous waste from getting into our town water supply and into our aquifer. Uh, <clears throat> contact with uh, the department in the early stages and response from them indicated that they had no plans whatsoever to do this. Um, and so the feeling of the commission is that very often when we uh, try to get changes into a plan that uh, we're told it's too late. The design is done, it's too late, it's gone out to bid, whatever. So while there isn't a finished plan, we feel that this uh, would be very important to make them aware that uh, this is something that the town very vociferously is requesting be included. At this time, I'm not ready to present a letter. I'd like to have this continued on the agenda for the next meeting and uh, at that time present you with a letter uh, which has been drafted by the Commission for Natural Resources and then we could either sign on to that letter or we could uh, develop a supporting letter which I will be uh, prepared with a draft uh, at the next meeting if we so decide to do that. Um, I know that uh, Mr. Nickerson you feel that this is a bit premature because there haven't been any plans presented, formal plans presented um, and I think we can discuss that at the next meeting and decide um, if perhaps we want to delay our letter but at least we would be prepared. Um, so that's my report for this evening. Thank you Mrs. Hardy. I don't. Uh disagree that there's probably nothing more important when, when you're considering the construction of exit 74 that we make sure that we contain spills and runoff into proper um, treatment uh, facilities or treatment uh, programs um, so that uh, a spilled oil tanker's oil doesn't end up in our aquifer. Very, very important. Um, I'm not sure who on what commission talked to who in DOT, but I know that they very much already know that we're interested uh, and will insist on this. Um, I think we should pursue this and, and, and do this in stages. So um, we'll send letters and we'll send more letters. I'm already in meetings about Exit 74. They're well aware of our intention uh, or intention to push for this. So uh, we'll look forward, to, we'll move this on to our agenda, for, uh, Mrs. Anderson. So if you put that on to, uh, 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 old business next time? Well, I think that we've learned in previous dealings that it's very important to establish a paper trail. Yeah, absolutely. And to have uh, documentation. Let's get some things in writing up there. Absolutely. Thank you. Great. Just, uh, next on our agenda is 2B, which is the discussion of possible action of the demo delay ordinance. Um, our, our town attorney's here, um, Ed O'Connell, who has helped draft this along with some others in town. Um, and Barbara Lowe Johnson here, who's kind of walked this through and made this part of her uh, daily routine maybe for a little while. So I'd like to hear from you both, maybe if you could kind of walk us through what we're looking at. Of course, we don't. Uh, no, no, we'll we've got two things mixed up here. We've got the demo delay, mm -hmm. and then we have. Smithers. The, the house change. Okay. Yeah. So, so no, Barbara. So which are we doing first? Well, right now, 2B uh, is the demo delay okay. ordinance. And Barbara Johnson. Oh, yeah. uh, she's she's that too. Barbara Johnson does everything now. Barbara Johnson Low. Um, you're also on, you also do historic properties and all sorts of things. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, so, uh, but, but we're still on the demo delay. So, um, uh, Mr. O'Connell, maybe if you could walk us through <coughs> what we're looking at. Of course, we're going to have to schedule a public hearing uh, as, uh, with, a, with a town ordinance change, correct? Yes, uh, yeah. this has been proposed by the Historic uh, Properties Commission. Hey, could you go to the mic? Ms. Johnson. Maybe, Ms. Okay, if, uh, if Barbara, if you want to come on up and, and why don't you walk us through and then, and then we'll, leave, we'll leave Ed here for any counsel that yeah. we might need. How's that? All right. Um, the demolition delay or ordinance, our proposed one, has, um, 
has been part of, of the Historic Properties Commission's mission, I think, as long as the commission has existed. It's um, the intent of the delay um, ordinance is exactly that. It is not a demolition stop ordinance. It is, um, it, we, it, it, it looks at, and we have worked very closely with the, um, with the building department and with Joe Smith on this. Uh, we are looking at a certain um, number of houses who were, that, that were built prior to, um, I think at this point, 1900, and that number may change, you know, a little bit um, as old houses become older. Um, but the purpose of the delay ordinance is to give the owner of the property and the Historic Properties Commission in the town an opportunity to do some documentation. Um, and and I, I'm, I recall not too long ago, um, um, James Stevenson passed away in Old Black Point, and um, his family found um, a wonderful sign of the, for the Morton House and gave it to the town. Um, that's the kind of thing that we would like, that's the kind of opportunity that we would like to, um, to afford folks. If they happen to live in a house that has some historic significance or is um, some uh, architectural significance, if um, events took place there, there were houses in town, I don't know if any of them still exist, where Washington really did sleep, you know, things like that. Um, that they would all, all of those things would, um, would be important to us and important to us to document. Um, I can tell you on an informal basis, there have been some um, houses that were um, over 100 years old recently, and uh, the owners were more than happy to let us go in there with cameras, you know, and, um, you know. They to document. Right, document right. the house, the architecture. Um, they were, we were more than happy to share artifacts with us, and then that's it. Yeah. Uh, Sandy, we, there's two demolition delay ordinances in front of us. We had an update to, to the yes. one that was in the packs. I want to make sure everyone's on the right one. The one, the one that has numbers on it? One through four. Okay, so let's make sure we're all on the same page. Okay. Okay. Um, Reading from the same hymn as they say Sunday. Do you want me to grab it? Great. No, I, we, I've got one too. Okay. We have it. We, we, have, we, we, we do have, have it. Barbara, are you yes. looking to. Um, um, Stop someone from demolition? No, de that's what I'm saying. Building? This is not a, a demolition stop yeah. ordinance in any way, um, and we are and we're trying to make this um, clean and simple for everyone, so that it is not a make work project. You know, if if you happen to live in a house that was built in 1880, um, we already the town has already um, authorized and paid for Barbara McGrath to do. Um, to document all of the houses from 1660 up, you know, until I think the turn of the century. Um, the Historic Properties Commission has already reviewed every one of those buildings, all right, and we have our own records, so we don't have to, you know, if, if we wanna know what, what that house is, we can go right to the binder. The binder is um, in the Hall of Records, okay, so that anybody can go and see it. So if your house, if you live in a house that was built in 1880, and you want to demolish the thing, um, then what this would do is say, uh, Joe Smith will, or his representative will take a look and say, gee, yeah, okay, this looks like it's, um, it's it, on the list. It's on the list, um, and let's find out what it says. And then and that's, that's where you go from there. Yeah. So it's on the list, and there, a 90-day waiting period. Um, we did 90 days, not because we expect 90 days, but basically that gives us some time to you know, what happens, what if it happens over Christmas or something like that? So we meet, we look at it. If it is one of the many houses in town, which was built in 1880, but there's like nothing left that even begins to represent what it, you know, um, what, it, what it looked like, we already know that. Um, we send a letter, say, okay. And good to go. Good to go. And we don't have to wait the 90 days. Nope. To, right. Right, and on the other hand, if there is, um, if the house has some, signal, you know, some significance, then we say, um, then we get back to them and say, listen, would you be willing to make arrangements for us to come in and, um, and, and document the house so that we can then have it for the town archives? And I mean, they don't have to let us do it, but it and would be nice. You yeah. can't force them There's to no do this. this thing. Right. 
uh, to be perfectly frank. <laughs> you know, but, it, but, it, but it is, I think it's a nice thing, I personally think this is a, a nice thing for us to do because we are documenting this town's history. These ha none of these, there aren't going to be any more of these hundred houses built. So it's a finite, you know, number of buildings that we're talking about. And if, if there is something in one of the buildings that is of significance to the town, it would be nice to have access to it. So yeah. that's the, that's yeah. the um, sociological justification. The legal part, I will uh, leave to the attorneys. Um, um, I'll ask for more questions before we excuse you. Uh, uh, would you be opposed if that 90-day limit came down a little bit? No, initially we put in 30. I thought And so. the town attorney uh, extended it to 90 because they, rather than um, adding caveats, um, and, and they had a good point. I don't expect that it would ever take 90 no, days. No, right. But I do understand from a legal standpoint that that's better than having it take 30 or uh, writing 30 and then having someone come in on January 2nd and saying, you know, you didn't have a meeting in December because it was a snowstorm and now it's past the 30 days. What do you want? Right. You know. Does it have to be, um, it has to go to a, the Historic Property Commission? Um, it, at a regular at meeting. At a regular meeting. That's why you need the extra time. Right. You can't just do it. Mm-hmm. Um, Okay. Now, it has been suggested by folks in the building department, and actually I've talked informally to um, some of the builders around town, and many of them have said, you know, if we know this thing exists um, and we've got a project, we're going to get it, we're going to call you, yeah. and we're going to get in there, and, and let's, let's, get it, let's get it done. Let's get it done. Right. right. So they look at it. It's in everyone's best, best interest. interest. Right. You right. Know, to provide um, access and then documentation. Yeah, the 90 days is, concerns me because I think we talked it was 30 yeah. days and then it's jumped I, up I to 90. So there's a balance between someone who's trying to do something to his land or his <laughs> property, mm -hmm. his or hers, um, and, and the, the historic value. So finding that balance of not holding up progress uh -huh. but also worshiping the, the past and, mm -hmm. and documenting it and uh, working together. Uh, we'll, we'll find the right number uh, yeah, as we progress say, through public I will defer to you hearing. and the attorneys and yeah, you guys can. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Are there other questions from the Board of Selectmen this evening? Anyone? The only question I have yes. is um, in paragraph four, the decision uh, statement, whether you, you waive it or you want to go the whole period, um, that's the only decision you're making? Pretty much. You're not, you're not making a demo decision, you're not doing anything yeah. else, it's determining how much time you think you can you need mm -hmm. to be able to work with the property owner to get access. We That's looked at um, a number of demolition delay ordinances from other towns, starting as far east as New London and going all the way um, um, down to Reading. And in our opinion, as a commission, we felt as though we were asking for trouble. And also, and we looked at the houses that currently exist. As I said, they aren't building anymore in this town, and we, we simply did not want to bring that kind of um, confusion and angst into the process. We're looking at a documentation. Okay. And if an applicant doesn't want to give you access, you, you would... Well, you would proceed at your next meeting and... You would, no, we'd say, okay, I, I don't really know. Well, we we communicated, we didn't come to an agreement, and we'll go forward. You wouldn't use the 90 days to say, well, we're going to wait you and hope you change your mind. I would hope that we would be able to have a conversation. I, I would expect it, but yeah. it can that, happen. That might <laughs> and be then it becomes, uh, you know, could, could, could become a potential financial impact to the outcome. That might be their only teeth in this whole ordinance. Right. When they, you mention you know, teeth, they'll bring that up. Teeth. That's it. Yeah. Okay. So you can I understand the, the, the need for and the desire to have the opportunity to do mm -hmm. it, but if you can't have a common, you can't get on common ground, I wouldn't want it to become a, you know, a burden to someone. I, I would say that I, we would agree with you completely, and I, I, at, from my point of view, it would seem it would be in the best interest of the homeowner to say, okay, fine, let's just right. Right. Do okay. It's in Thank everyone's you. best interest to get it done and over with. Right. And you're just talking about getting pictures. Maybe removing things, maybe well, no, with we, cooperation. I, I mean, yeah. you, know, yeah. you could go on. There could be a beautiful mantelpiece. If somebody's going right. to, if they're going to chop it up and we have a use for it somewhere, right. that's great. 
if they're going to sell it, it's theirs, right. you know? It's theirs. <laughs> so. right. right. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Are there other questions? I have uh, two. Yes, Mark. Okay. The um, $200 deposit, that's just, is that being paid to the building department? That's to the building department for the sign. Um, when the sign gets back, they get their 200 bucks. I think. I actually haven't even read how they wrote this up this last time. But so the, the building department's going to provide the sign. Right. Is that normally how we do it? Oh, well, yeah, it is. I don't know how it normally is, it goes. We can find out before the uh, this was, public uh, hearing. This was Joe Smith's suggestion, since they're going to make the sign, and the sign will be a public So it wouldn't be a baseline. custom sign? It would be... No, be this is usually time. when we have zoning signs, that usually the applicant pays yeah, for Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm trying to... This comes from Joe Smith, so <coughs> do, you, do you happen to know if... I, I believe uh, the building official contemplates that there would be a standard sign uh, placed on the structure, on a wall to structure. That's and he wants to get the sign back, so he doesn't have to do a new one every time. Uh, that's and that's why the $200 okay. deposit system uh, wasn't there. Yeah. So standard sign, okay. Right. Second question is when the Historic Commission goes into these buildings, whose liability covers? Oh, who's in who owns that liability? The property owner yes. or? Property owner. Yes. Property is that going to be a. Is that gonna people come into the house. Mm -hmm. That would be. Mm -hmm. If the property owner voluntarily allows people to come into his or her house, uh, the property owner's insurance would cover it. Okay, is that going to be a hindrance to going in, especially some of these old houses that may have some structural problems? That's up to the property owner to decide. Right. Yeah. I was wondering if that would make it difficult for you to get into some of these properties. I don't know. That, that seems to me... Um, I, I, I don't usually use common sense and <laughs> law, legal, you know, legal stuff in the same sentence, but I would think there would be... A, an issue of common sense. Okay. I, I don't really know. Hopefully it doesn't become an issue, but I just That's wanted right. to raise it. Okay. okay. Get near and closer to the microphone, Barbara. You're okay. Not, you're too far away. Sorry. Yeah. Next time. Thank you. Okay. I'm good. Uh, other questions? Anyone? Normally when we're proposing an ordinance, we go next to we schedule a public hearing. Okay. So at okay. our next uh, Board of uh, Selectmen meeting, we'll have a public hearing on this ordinance where the public can uh, voice their opinion on it, and, uh, and then the selectmen will deliberate. That's right. Uh, the numbered ordinance is uh, in substantial uh, agreement with the previously unnumbered draft that was uh, sent to you. We cleaned it up a little by referring to, uh, instead of saying CGS, we said Connecticut General Statutes, for example. And that's the enabling statute which authorizes this delay ordinance. And actually, to keep it in context, that ha lets, lets towns go up to 180 days. So 90 days is not the uh, authorized cap. So we keep that in mind as you go forward with this. But uh, in, in East Line, uh, our ordinances are adopted by the Board of Selectmen after a public hearing. So the public hearing would occur next at which people could ask questions, comments could be made, and then the Board of Selectmen would decide whether to adopt the ordinance or adopt the ordinance as amended uh, and that would be a decision of the board of selectmen, and that's what would happen at the next meeting. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That's how that works. 